hey guys and welcome back to my channel if you're new you are welcome please make sure that you subscribe and if you're an oldie thank you so much for coming back i appreciate you now without wasting any time if you're an oldie then you will know that i have been following the blue leg in Bayona case very closely now for all of those who don't know i'll just quickly speed you guys in lulegi passed away or was shot rather in a durban a nightclub which is called rich durban on the 23rd of september of this year so he was shot by a guy named george jonas now george jonas appeared in durban magistrate court today so i will be giving you guys an update as to what is happening Okay, at the time I am recording this, it is the 21st of October 2020, keep that in mind. So today what happened was, Jonas George Thawudze, who's 30 years old, I know he looks 60, he appeared in the Durban Magistrate Court for a bail application. So what normally happens in this case is that the prosecution would read out your charge to you as to what are you charged for, and they did that, but they decided to upgrade him from an initial murder charge under Schedule 5 to a murder charge under Schedule 6. Now, what does that mean, you may ask? It means that should he be found guilty of killing Mlule Kimbewana, it gives the, uh, the judge the authority to give him a life sentence for this. So I think this is a huge positive that happened today. So they also added another charge, which is being found in possession of an illegal firearm. And they also stated that this guy is a flight risk. So we are denying bail. And this is because he had actually evaded bail before. He was uh, charged with reckless driving in Santon, Johannesburg. And the warrant for his arrest was actually produced in court today. So essentially, this guy is not trustworthy. He ran away from a mere reckless uh, driving charge. Uh, how much more when it comes to a murder case? So essentially what the prosecution is saying is that, listen, this guy is not worthy worthy of bail he's not trustworthy he's a flight risk deny him bail please so the next thing that happened was the prosecution explained what happened on the night and this is from information obviously they gathered from witnesses and what happened that night is that apparently this guy george went to rich club as usual and he occupied his usual table now apparently he occupies a mood table there which is apparently reserved for the elite so he did that as usual and he hosted a couple of girls that was all good and dandy and well come quarter to 12 you know because it's covid so clubs close early the club closes and now it's time to go on go home now what happened was is apparently the girls that he was hosting at his table then decided they are going to go home with um with Mluleki. It's either they're going to catch a ride home with Mluleki or they're going to go home with Mluleki. Whatever the case may be, be that they're going home or the, with him or catching a ride with him, it's their prerogative. And I feel like that does not matter. But apparently George, because he is apparently Mr. George and he feels entitled, he was mad about this. Absolutely furious. Uh, feeling on some why i can't be buying booze for you guys and hosting you guys and then you guys are going home with other men so he uh now they're outside the club they're in the puppy parking lot he then approaches mluleki's car and obviously mluleki is in the front seat the girls are in the back seat now he peeps through the windows and and basically says something to the regard of so you girls are going home with other men after consuming my alcohol like, imagine, guys. Like, imagine the entitlement in that statement. So that is what he says. I don't know what the girl said. This George guy proceeds to bang the door, Mlulegi's door, as well as the car next to him, which belonged to Mlulegi's friend. Now, obviously, Mlulegi is not going to be chuffed about someone banging his door, so he protests. Uh, and then this guy, George, is like, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Nonetheless, he then turns around. He goes to his friend who was keeping his keys to ask for his car keys so that he can get his fire up. Obviously, his friend says no. He punches his friend and then takes the keys and he goes to his Mercedes Benz to get the fire up. He comes back on his way to Mluleki. He shoots two shots in the air and then he gets to Nuleki. He shoots him twice in the chest, you guys. The nerve, the gall for shooting someone just because of alcohol and girls. And then he turns around. He shoots a couple of more shots. He gets into, he's escorted to his, uh, 
Mercedes Benz and he drives off. He actually drives from Durban all the way to Johannesburg. And then he only comes back, I think, 13 days later. So that is the gist of what happened. And then now I am going to tell you what uh, this guy George said in return in his plea to get bail. So in his bid to get bail, his defense team spoke on his behalf and essentially explained what he does for a living. So he's got multiple businesses, including investment company, which is involved in forex exchange. He also owns salons. He has livestock for farming and he owns two taverns. But he says that his water supply tender was his main source of income in which he earned about 100,000 rands a month. And this is where he employs 20 families which are taken care of via this tender. So he argued that his prolonged imprisonment would compromise this business, which required his personal supervision. Now, my question was, when you were killing a poor soul, guys, did you not think about these poor families now that would be out of jobs? This guy is boring my life. Anyway, uh, the court also heard that this guy rents out two properties and he also rents a property himself for 40,000 Rand in Saint in Johannesburg. And it also heard that he also bought a Royce Royce recently. Now, where I thought, I think this part is funny. He goes on to say that if he is granted bail, he will be able to raise only 20,000 Rand. Bail. Like, can you, can we do the mathematics, guys? From telling us you just bought a Rolls Royce, you own farms, you've got forex businesses, this and that and that, you own 100,000 rands a month. Then you come back and tell us, should you be granted bail, which I hope is denied, you'll only be able to pay 20,000 rands bail. Like, this guy is full of crap, if you ask me. Anyway, this brings us to the end of the video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know down below what you think about this whole case. I will be sure to update you again soon. Bye.